Cisco Certified Network Associate Day 50. Welcome back everyone. I'm Imran Rafai, your trainer for this entire series. Today we're going to talk about EIGRP configurations. Uh, in the last video we introduced EIGRP. Today we look at configuration. Without wasting much time, let's get straight into today's class. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, technology, business and more. Whether you want to fuel your creativity, curiosity or even your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving in 2019. If you want to become a popular YouTube star, you need to up your video editing game. This course on Skillshare is perfectly catering to beginners in video editing, taking you from importing your raw footage to editing and color correcting it and finally exporting it to beautiful YouTube ready formats. Try it today to start your YouTube career. Join more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare. The first 500 subscribers of this channel who would click on the link in the description will get two months free trial. Don't waste that chance, click on that today. And for people who want my social media contact, that's given on the screen. All right, so what are we gonna look at today? Today, we would be looking at 2.6. Now, yeah, in the last video we did 2.6, we introduced you to EIGRP, but this video we look at configure and verification. So like I mentioned, we're going to look at two things, configuration and verification. Configuring EIGRP is very, very simple. Like every other routing protocol that we looked at, uh, RIP and OSPF, uh, it's very easy. You go to the global configuration mode and you say router EIGRP. Now, in, in other cases, we did OSPF for OSPF or RIP for RIP, right? So in this case, it's EIGRP. So we say router EIGRP, and this is a global uh, configuration command. So global configuration command router EIGRP, and then you give a uh, autonomous system number. So this number has to match. Let's say if you have five routers, and if you want all these five routers to have EIGRP uh, protocols uh, working in, in between each other, and if you want them to be neighbors, then you need to have the same autonomous system number. In, in OSPF, that was a process ID, process number, but here it's a, a autonomous system number. In OSPF, this number need not match. So if you say router OSPF1, that need not match if you want to have neighbors, right? In, in EIGRP, this number has to match with your neighbor, only then the neighborship would form. So there are two ways of uh, giving the network command. So like, Every routing protocol, once you do the EIGRP, you go inside and then you need to introduce the networks which you want to advertise, right? So this, in once you are in uh, the subcommand, there were two ways that you can do. One, you could do without the wildcard mask. So if you say uh, network um, and you say 10 dot, uh, you could, I mean, when you do network without wildcard mask, you would just give a class full IP address, so you should technically give it 10.0.0.0, which means it was it is going to take any IP address, any interface rather, in, in that router, any interface starting with 10, it would add to EIGRP routing. That's what this does. This takes the entire uh, class A 10.0.0.0 uh, network. Now, even if you were to say 10. Uh, without the wildcard mask, if you say 10.1.1.10, uh, you do this, uh, EIGRP will accept that command, but it would automatically convert it to 10.0.0.0. So you might be entering your subnet network, right? Network ID of a subnet, thinking that it will accept it. No, it will accept the command. You will not know it's it has not accepted the subnet. In fact, what it has done is it has converted it to a class full uh, 10. Dot, uh, class A network and it's converted it into 10.0.0.0. So it depends on your first octet. If it is 10, it's going to be class A. If you're giving a class B IP address, it's going to move it to a class B uh, uh, network. And if it's a class C uh, IP address that you're giving, it is going to move to the whole class C uh, network. So that's one way without the wildcard mask. But if you want to uh, 
uh, create the subnet you know if you want to give a certain uh, subnet then you would use a wildcard mask which say network and you say 10.1.12.0 and you want the slash 24 of this right so what you would do is uh, not slash 24 you would give this uh, wildcard mask so you're going to give 255 so ten, network 10.1.12.0 0.0.0.255 0 .0 is nothing but 10.1.12.0 slash 24 network so it's going to accept the whole the subnet of 10.1.12.0 uh, if you use the wildcard mask format so uh, you could configure eigrp in two way one without this wildcard mask which would take the entire classful network or if you want the classless uh, network, then you need to give a wildcard mask. So that's the configuration bit. So let's go into Packet Tracer and look at this topology. This topology is what we learned, uh, which we, uh, uh, in our introduction to a feasible distance and reported distance in the, in the last video, we used this topology. So we're gonna use this, uh, we're gonna configure this network in uh, Packet Tracer and see how it works. All right, so this is the topology, and uh, we have five routers, router one, router two, router three, router four, and router five. And we have the same, I have uh, configured the same, uh, even though they're all gigabit ethernet uh, links, I have uh, gone and changed the bandwidth and delay to match our uh, topology. So depending on this topology, I have configured packet tracer and I've changed the bandwidth and delay information to match this. And uh, on, on R5, this network, what I've done is I've put a loopback interface and loopback interface, I have given this IP address. I've given the IP address 10.1.1.1 .1 .1 to this uh, interface. And uh, I have set this bandwidth and delay information to match this, right? So let's let's go back to packet tracer. Right, so how do we enable EIGRP? So let's go back here. Let's go into, at the moment, it's only, I have not, uh, enable, I've not enabled uh, 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 EIGRP. I've just put the interface IP addresses, right? So let's go in here. So let's go to configure terminal, right? And I'm going to uh, enable uh, EIGRP. So I say router EIGRP and I can put an autonomous system number. So I can put any number from 1 to 65,535. So let's do 1 hit enter now here like I said I can use two way I can say network and I can give an IP address right so if this one uh, if you look at the IP address here 10.1.12.0 10.1.13.0 10.1.14.0 .1 right all of them are um, in the 10 network so I could give one command so I can say 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0. And it says either I can put a wildcard mask or I can hit enter, right? So if I hit enter, EIGRP is now going to run on all three interfaces. So all these three interfaces, EIGRP would run. How can I check that? I can say do show IP EIGRP interfaces. Okay. And it is going to tell me that EIGRP is running on these three interfaces, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1, and serial interface 0 slash 3. So this is, uh, so I will type that here again. So that is show IP uh, EIGRP interfaces. And if I hit enter, this is one of the verification command to check which are the interfaces EIGRP is running on. So EIGRP is running on those three interfaces, which is fantastic. Now let's go here in router two. Uh, let's enable EIGRP on router two as well. So configure terminal router EIGRP one. Now this time we will not do the full network command. We will try to give uh, only um the with the wildcard with the wildcard mask so let's say network 10.1.12.0 0 0.0.0.255 okay so now let's do the same thing do show ip eigrp interface and we see 
EIGRP is running only on gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 because that only that interface matched this command, right? It checked this command. It said wildcard mask of 0 slash 0 slash 0 dot 0 dot 0. That means the first three octet needs to match. So it looks at all the interfaces where the first three octets as are 10.1.12. If any interface has 10.1.12, it puts that into EIGRP. That's what happened here. Now let's do the other thing, 10.1.25.0, okay, 10.1.25.0, and hit enter. If we can do the verification again, and we see EIGRP uh, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 is also now part of EIGRP. You see gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 has already a one uh, peer. So one of the peer, that means one neighbor, it has uh, found a neighbor. And uh, that neighbor is R1, which we already configured. So we'll look at some verification command later in this video, but for now we will go on configuring EIGRP. So let's go here. We could do uh, any of those uh, with the wildcard mask or without wildcard mask. To make it easy, I'm gonna make it without wildcard mask. So router EIGRP one network, 10.0.0.0 and that's it. I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Enter configure terminal, configure terminal, router EIGRP1, network 10.0.0.0. Brilliant, see how, how easy EIGRP is compared to uh, OSPF. Now OSPF, there are so many things that you need to consider. You need to look at ABRs, you need to consider if you have multiple areas where you should which is the ideal location, which should be the ABR uh, router, and all that information you need to worry about. EIGRP is straightforward. You don't really have to think about it. So I can come in here, configure terminal, uh, router EIGRP1, okay, EIGRP1, network 10.0.0.0, and EIGRP is now running on all the devices. Um, let's look at uh, some of the information. So I, I go here, I'll say show IP interface, uh, show IP uh, route, okay? When I say show IP route, uh, let's look at this interface, this, IP, this uh, interface or this network rather, 10.1.1.0 network, that's the network that we were calculating in the last video. So let's look at that. So it says the network is 10.1.1.0 slash 24 and uh, the admin distance is 90. EIGRP has an admin distance of 90. Uh, D is EIGRP. So whenever you see D, that means it's learned on EIGRP. And this is the metric. So it says to go to this network, 10.1.1.0, the network is uh, the uh, metric is 261112. So if you go back here, it, it had to be 26112, but it is 28416. So I have to go back and see what happened. All right, so we are in um, router five. So let's do this. Let's look at the show, uh, show interface loopback zero. And uh, let's see what is it, because it's a loopback interface. At the, yeah, so this is the thing. The loopback interface here, it is, uh, 10 millisec 10 microsecond according to our calculation but if you look at here our delay is 5000 millis uh, microsecond now look at this what I, this is what i was talking about microsecond so the u second is nothing but microsecond so let's do this let me see if i can change this configure terminal uh, i think loopback you can't change but i'm going to quickly check interface uh, loopback 0 delay uh, okay, now this is another thing. So that was microseconds. So if you if you hit here, it says throughput delay in tens of microseconds, tens of microseconds. So whatever value you put here in microsecond, it is going to be ten times of it. So if I say one delay one, it is technically I don't know if uh, loop back they accept that delay. If they do, it's going to be uh, ten microseconds. So this is not accepting. But uh, let me see if it's accepting in. 
calculation. Okay, so it's not accepting even in calculation. So um, if you do the calculation, you will see that the if you do the calculation with what we did in our last video, you will see that the calculation would take it to 26112. That will be the calculation for uh, feasible distance from router 2 to uh, this in, uh, network. So similarly, we will uh, look at other figure, uh, other values. So in route 1, let's do show IP route and uh, we see the same thing. We see this because the calculation has changed. So now technically everything is different. It's not going to match with 26, uh, I mean 3976 because that calculation is matching. But uh, you, you, you know how it is done. So what you could do is now you could start looking at your calculation. Use, use the formula that we gave in the last video. Try to match this uh, figures according to your packet tracer. If you have packet tracer, look at all the figures, all the delay and bandwidth in each of those links in between. Create your own uh, topology and try to calculate. But I mean, if you ask me, calculating is not required. It's just for you to know how it is calculated. In your real life, you're never going to do this calculation. You're just going to take that figure, but you need to know how it's calculated. So you know, if you want to have, let's say you're doing load balancing, which we'll be discussing in a while in this video, uh, you need to know how to change your delay. You would never be changing the bandwidth in real life. Bandwidth is something that you will not touch. If you want to fine tune EIGRP, most probably delay is the value that you would be uh, changing or tuning a little bit to get a, uh, a certain value that you want, right? So you could change bandwidth or delay and you could change uh, the calculation and the metric. So do that, that's going to be uh, your homework. And like always, uh, the topology that we're gonna use in factories today, we'll be using two topologies, both of them would be uh, on our website uh before you um, by the time you watch this so that's something that you need to keep in mind so let's go back to our uh uh presentation so th so this is the topo so basically enabling uh, eigrp is very simple very straightforward router eigrp and you put an as number then you have two ways of uh saying network so you say network without your a wildcard mask or network with wildcard mask and both of them would enable EIGRP. Uh, like in OSPF, we have three tables in EIGRP. You have uh, the neighbor table, then you have topology table and the routing table. We looked at the routing table. Let's look at all three once again. All right, so this is uh, router one's uh, CLI. So let's say, let's start with neighbor table. Show IP EIGRP neighbor we see it has three neighbors 10.1.12.2 that is router 2 10.1.13.3 that's router 3 10.1.14.4 that's router 4. it also tells you through which interface this is a local interface through which interface it reaches uh, the neighbor so it's gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 it reaches the neighbor gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 it reaches the neighbor and gigabit uh, serial interface 0 sl uh, slash 3 dot sl uh, 3 slash 0 in through that interface it reaches the neighbor this is the whole time now if you remember by default the whole time uh, and hello time so hello time is five seconds every five seconds there's a hello that uh, eigrp sends its neighbor and the whole time is three times the hello time, so that's 15. So technically this value will keep going from 15 to 10, and every time, every five seconds when it reaches 10, you would have a new hello message come, and it'll reset to 15. So if you see, it'll see it'll go to 12, 11, and it goes back 14, if you see this, right? From 11, it went to 10, and then it reset to 14. So every five seconds, there'll be a hello message, and it will reset to 15. So this is, the whole time and it tells you uptime so this is uptime again how many minutes since this router has gone up and uh, these are informations uh, from if you remember our rtp like reliable transmission protocol i said eigrp talks to neighbor using rtp so rtp is uh, these are informations relating to rtp the next table that we're going to look at is the topology table so show IP EIGRP topology. Now, 
topology table is where the entire topology now if you look at uh, topology from ospf uh, perspective ospf had a very in-depth topology it, it it literally knew the entire uh, topology right it knew about all the routers and all the links about all the routers so it made a very comprehensive topology on the other hand eigrp uh, when you talk about topology it doesn't really look at the entire topology it with whatever metrics with whatever updates eigrp sends or the neighbor sends it 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 does its calculation and with with the calculation that it did like we know how we do the calculation right using the calculation it takes it thinks about two uh, uh metrics so it looks at feasible distance it calculates its feasible distance and whichever has got the lowest feasible distance right that becomes the route that becomes the preferred route okay so in this case the uh, 26368 is the lowest ft and it takes that information 26368 and it puts it in the routing table so 26368 is the routing table so if you look at the uh, routing table which we'll look in a while you will see that this is the preferred route gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 but we know there is a feasible successor so this becomes the successor so that's what the successor will go into the routing table then depending on its condition the condition is if the reported distance of the other one of i mean one becomes the lowest uh, uh, the route with the lowest ft becomes a successor whatever remaining routes that you have it looks at the reported distance of all those routes and if the reported distance is less than the uh, feasible distance which is in this case it's true 3072 has a feasible distance less than uh, rather reported distance less than the feasible distance of 26,368 and hence that becomes the feasible successor. So that means if this link fails, that is the gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 link ever fails for whatever reason, this fellow would immediately becomes, it immediately becomes the successor. So convergence in ERGRP is instantaneous. In OSPF, they still had to do, they, they have the topology it needs to still run the SPF algorithm. It does the SPF al algorithm, even though it takes about one or two seconds, it still had to do that calculation and it takes some time. Depending on the topology, it could take much more longer. But in EIGRP, it doesn't matter. It's instantaneous because it knows the backup, right? So that's topology. Now let's look at the routing table, show IP route. So if you look at that link, we said, it is going to put this as uh, because it's got the lowest FD. It's going to be the successor, and the successor goes into the routing tables. That is the uh, uh, link that has gone to the routing table. So routing table has one link with a metric of two six three eight. Two six three eight is the FD, and that's the lowest uh, FD, and that's the successor. So these are the three topology tables, rather the three tables of uh, EIGRP. So we need to, if you, okay, now once we have EIGRP configured, or if you're coming to troubleshoot and you want to see uh, which are the interfaces EIGRP is running, there are three commands through which you can check. The first is show running config. Obviously, that is something that we all know. So I say show run, and then I can look at the command for router so it says router eigrp1 and network 10.0.0 now only by this uh, information i will not know which are the interfaces eigrp is running on because it just says network 10.0.0 then i need to go to that interface i need to go and look at all the interfaces uh, interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 0 it is starting with 10 because this is classful so anything starting with 10 will be accepted this is starting with 10, is accepted. This is starting with 10, it's accepted. And this is also starting with 10, it's accepted. So all these three interfaces will be doing EIGRP. So that's how you do, uh, you check with routing, uh, show running config. The next command is show IP protocols. So I say show IP protocols. And I can see that routing protocol is EIGRP1. 
and it says it's S1. It talks about metrics, like I said, k-values. We'll not be touching k-values because it's not part of your CCNA. And by default, we leave whatever is default. I said k1 and k3 are ones. That means it's only going to take these. So don't worry about that. The router ID, just like OSPF router ID, EIGRP also has router ID and it uses the same. It looks at configured router ID. So if you go into EIGRP and uh, if you're telling uh, a certain router ID that is going to be the router ID if you don't have a manually configured router ID then it's going to look at the loopback interface the highest loopback interface becomes a router ID if not highest IP version 4 router uh, interfaces uh, with ha which has the highest IP address that IP address becomes the router ID so the router ID is uh, available here uh, Automatic summarization is disabled. Now, this is also uh, uh, important. Now, uh, summarization is, um, I mean, in today's world, with because we don't, we do uh, subnet because of uh, subnet, because of classless uh, routing, we don't look at uh, summarization and it's best to leave summarization off. But uh, if, you, if you enable summarization, if you say uh, auto summarization is enabled, what it is going to do is it's going to uh, summarize every time, uh, let, for instance, let's say, let's say you have a, a router here, okay, and you have a router here, and let's say this has three networks. You have 10.1.2.0, 10.1.10.1, and 10.1.2.0. Right, you have all these uh, networks here. If and let's say they are doing EIGRP, if you enable auto summarization, when this network sends an update, it sends uh, EIGRP update. It says it has a route to 10.10.0.0/8. Right, it tells that. Anything for 10.0.0.8, 10.0.0.0 slash 8, send me updates. So any traffic coming to 10.0.0.0 slash 8, traffic would come to this router. So let's say this is router 1 and this is router 2. It would say that anything, any traffic that you want to go to any 10. network, send it to me. Now in this case, that's fine. But what happens if there is another network here and you have 10.1.5.0 uh, here, 10.1.75.0 here. Now what happens? And if even him, I mean, if, if let's say this guy also has the same thing, it says uh, 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 auto summary is on, he's also going to tell the same thing to this uh, router 1, now this is router 3. So router 3 is going to tell router 1 that 10.0.0.0 slash 8 is available with me. Now this happens because, let's say for instance, if this is 192, uh, 192, 1.0 network, this is 192, 2.0 network. So when this router it sees that okay now it is no more 10 i'm i'm going from 10 dot network to a 192 dot network so it says okay i need to summarize at this level so this is a decision eigrp makes whenever it goes to a non uh, i mean if it's going to a different network so if it's not uh, if it's it's going to work in classful it sees that this is a classful uh, network and 10 dot anything that is not 10 it's going to something called 192 so i'm going to uh, summarize it. Now this is wrong. So it, you could solve this problem by making sure that if you want to enable summarization, then you should make sure that all the tens are going to be here, right? You can't have tens anywhere else. So you can't have a non-contiguous network. You have to make sure as an administrator, from, while you're designing, you should design in such a way that all your tens network, or rather that entire uh, class full um, IP address range, uh, network is going to be in the same router then yes uh, summarization will work in today's world the best thing is just to say auto summarization is not uh, enabled so if you say disable what it do, would do is instead of sending this one update it would say 10.1.2.0 uh, slash 24 is here 
then it would send one network for this one update for this and one update for this it will send three separate updates slash 24s uh, and that way the routing table uh, r1's routing table would be slightly more populated because instead of having one uh, route it would have three routes and depending on the number of routes it would have more routes if summarization is not enabled so summarization would help it reduce the number of routing uh, entries in the routing table but if you don't plan it well you could destroy your network so that's running config you could do show IP protocol. So let's go back to show protocols. So auto summarization is disabled. Uh, one more thing. So uh, this is the distance. By default, the distance is 90. Like I said, uh, the admin distance is 90. Uh, maximum path uh, is 4. By default, max maximum path is uh, for load balancing. So if up to 4 uh, load equal costs, like if you have equal costs, if the metrics are equal, up to 4 links can become load balancing where it will start sending traffic uh, by balancing the load. Uh, OSP also could do that, right? So if you want to change, by default it is four. If you want to change it to, you say only two, uh, up to two links I want it to be load balancing, you can go to maximum path and then change that value to uh, two, right? That's something that you could do. Uh, Maximum hop count, if you remember in RIP, the maximum hop count was 16. Here, the maximum hop count is 12, uh, 100. Uh, variance, again, if you want to do unequal cost load balancing, you need to make use of this uh, figure, variance. We'll talk about it uh, when we're talking about load balancing a while later. Um, routing for network is 10.0.0. So now this is another way uh, for you to understand uh, how this is configured. So when it says routing for networks 10.0.0.0, it is nothing but we have used the non wildcard version. So if it's a wildcard version, it's going to show those uh, individually here. We'll look at in router 2 because we did router 2 with wildcard. So we'll look at that. Uh, we'll do that right away. So let's do the same thing here. Show, show IP protocols. And uh, we see that routing for networks because we use wildcard it says 10.1.12.0 24 10.1.25.0 slash 24. now the reason i want you to know all these things is in your in your real life it's easy you could just type out uh, all these commands and check but in your exam you might only have an output shown for show ip protocols and then you need to know how to uh, look at this information and find out what has happened right so it's best to take a note like take a notebook and start writing the information so you can type this command and see what are the information available in this command uh, when you say show ip topology show ip eigrp topology what are the data that's available so as a if you want to master cisco uh, maybe not so much for ccna but if you want to go uh, ahead in cisco maybe ccnp ccie it's best to know what is there right each you, basically your Cisco certification program is your mastery on your CLI, right? Mastering iOS devices, that's maybe about 75% or 80% of your um, CCNA, CCNP, CCI uh, test and your knowledge is your knowledge about Cisco's CLI. Of course, the technology, knowing how these technology work and all that is also important. But more important is Cisco's iOS. How can you configure Cisco uh, devices to a certain uh, format, right? So uh, you need to know what are the information Cisco commands, right? iOS, what command gives you what information? That is something that you need to master. So let's go back here. Uh, so then it talks about routing information source, right? Routing information source, it tells you the IP address of those devices. In in if you remember of OSPF, OSPF spoke about the router ID of those devices. Here it's not talking about the router ID. I think it's timed out. Uh, it's not talking about router IDs. It's talking about the IP address of those devices. So the other way to look at uh, to to verify uh, EIGRP interface is something that we already did, uh, but we'll do it again. And that is by typing show IP EIGRP interface. So show IP EIGRP interface. And we see these three interfaces are working uh, 
uh, in EIGRP, right? So this is how, these are the three ways with which you can verify if EIGRP is working on an interface. Uh, next, we'll look at load balancing, like I said. So if two interfaces have equal cost, by default, load balancing, so what it would do, okay, um, let's let's take take a packet trace example. All right, so this is the topology we're going to work on. Mm, like I said, this is configured and it's uh, all the bandwidth, the bandwidth and delay is same for all the four links. Uh, so let's enable EIGRP in all these devices and uh, we know how to enable EIGRP, configure terminal, uh, router, EIGRP1, network 10.0.0.0, okay. Um, okay, I'm gonna go quickly show run. Let me cheat a bit. So I can do this. I can say copy and I can go here, CLI, enable, configure terminal, and then paste this. Um, that's good. as good as typing the whole thing. <laughs> but, um, okay, what happened? Configure terminal, I can say paste, enter, go here, enter configure terminal, paste, hit enter, okay? Now, since the cost, now we're looking at reaching this interface, the loopback interface from R1, and since this has the same bandwidth and delay for all the four links, it should have equal cost to reach through both the links. So let's say show IP route and we would see that one moment. So let's, uh, okay, right. So we'll see that it's learned through EIGR uh, P 10.1.1.0 network. There are two links. So you can go through gigabit ethernet zero slash zero and gigabit ethernet zero slash one. Both of them have the same metric. So this is equal cost. We can look at the topology as well. Show IP EIGRP topology. And we see the same information here. Two successes. They both have this. I mean, of course, this is the FD. So that's why both of them have the same FD. And that's why you have two successes. Now we knew that equal cost load balancing, we know what it is because even EIG, even OSPF did it. So OSPF did it, as long as the cost is the same, uh, you do uh, equal cost load balancing. But with OSPF calculating costs, and it's, it's more straightforward, there was not much that would change, but that's not how EIGRP is. Now, if you see some of the calculations, some of the metric calculations for EIGRP went into the millions, right? So you would have uh, EIGRP uh, one network with uh, 2,225,200 and there would be another uh, cost which was 201, right? Maybe one, you know, if you're talking about in millions, the difference between the two would have been just like one, right? Both of them are really bad connection. But you could technically make use of load balancing. You know, two bad connections is good as one, you know, better connection, right, with load balancing. So uh, EIGRP gives you a way through which you can edit, right? You could uh, fine-tune EIGRP to consider two unequal cost lines or unequal cost links to still be... Uh, considered for load balancing. Now, how do you do that? We use something called as variance, right? So, uh, let's take smaller values. So, I'm going to take uh, smaller uh, FDs and RDs. And let's say there is one uh, router and these are the four routes. Uh, considering FD, router 2 is the successor. Yeah, we know why it is because 90 is the FD and that 90 is the least uh, among the three, right? So 90 is the FD. Now consider the RD of the other two links. So is RD 80 less than 90? Yes. So this is a potential candidate for feasible successor. Okay. And 180 is not less than 90. So this will never be a feasible successor. So 
now we have success and feasible success now load balancing unequal unequal, unequal cost load balancing is you have a feasible successor now at what condition right at certain if you tune it certain way you can take use of the feasible successor into your uh, uh, routing table and do unequal cost load balancing so we use a variance call uh, we, we use a, uh, a parameter called variance so you go into ehrp and you say variance 2 so by default variance is 1 but when you say variance 2 what it does is it looks at the uh, successors fd multiplies by the variance so in this case it is 90 so if you do variance 2 right at the rate of variance 2 this becomes 180 now if the other fd right if your feasible successors fd is less than 180 then it will go into the routing table so in the first case with variance 1 this it will not go into the routing table only this will go into the routing table this will never go into the routing table in any case because it is not even a feasible successor but if this one you look at uh, variance 2 the fd is less than 180 so this will go into the routing table uh, fd this will obviously go into the routing table now when you go to variance 3 at variance 3 uh, this is 270 right anything less than 270 will go into the routing table so 120 is less than uh, 270 this will go but don't get confused see again that's the reason i put x mark in the beginning even though 250 is less than 270 we would if you don't think properly you would think it's 250 is less than 270 it should go into routing table with variance 3 no it will not go because this condition doesn't match right the reported distance is not less than uh, 90 so this will not be a feasible successor so because it's not a feasible successor even with variance 3 it is not going to get into the routing table right so this is how you enable non uh, i mean non equal cost links right any unequal cost links we would change the variance values and make sure that they go into the routing table so that's how you do variable cost or rather unequal cost load balancing with EIGRP. This is something that's not there in OSPF. It's supported by EIGRP. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button if you like this video and of course subscribe to this channel to get more videos. Uh, thank you so much. We will be coming back very very soon with more videos. So until then stay tuned and see you all very very soon. Bye bye.